All right, so hopefully the last video over transformations, which is some more examples, some different type of examples. And so this one here gives us a graph, which is not a basic function, and asks us to transform it in the way that it gives us the transformation. So this graph, this red graph here, is identified as f of x, is identified as our original function, and now we want to implement this whole transformation to it. So again, it's the same thing, but in a different format. Okay, so we need to figure out what happens where. So let me just do it piece at a time. The first piece is negative. We know when I multiply by a negative, it's going to reflect. This is on the outside, so it's going to reflect it vertically, which means it's going to reflect it over the x axis. That means I would multiply all my y values by a negative. The next one is I'm subtracting one. A subtraction means it's going to be a shift. It's on the inside of my parentheses, so that means it's going to shift it horizontally. Since it's subtracting one, that means I actually shift it right one unit, which means I actually add one to all my x values. And then the last one is a plus 2. So again, plus is a shift. This is on the outside, so this is going to happen vertically. So this means I'm actually going to shift it up two units, which means I take all my y values and I add 2 to it. Okay, if I can do all of these things, that will give me my transformed graph. So I would identify your key points. We see them on the outside, but I would also pick these points here, and I would do this math with it. So let me start at this one here. This point is 0, negative 1. So I need to multiply my y value at a negative, so that gives me 0, 1. And then I need to move it right 1 unit and up 2 units. So that's where that point is going to go. Then let me start with this point here, negative 2, 1. I need to reflect it over the x-axis by multiplying it by a negative. That would give me this here. And then I'm going to shift it right 1 unit and up 2 units. So that gives me this point right here. This guy over here, if I reflect it, that puts me up here. Right 1 unit, up 2 units gives me right there. And then this open circle right here, if I reflect it, gives me down to negative 4. If I shift it right 1 unit and up 2 units, gives me this point right here. Okay, so now if I connect those points, that should give me this graph. And so, gives me this one here, and this one on the right actually should be an open circle. And so we should see it reflected and then shifted. And I think that's exactly what I see there. Okay, let's do that again. Same starting graph, but now we're going to change it in a different fashion. So I suggest that you pause the video to see if you can do this one on your own. Okay, on the outside I'm multiplying by 3. So since it's multiplication on the outside, that means I'm going to stretch it vertically. So that means I take my y values times 3. I have a negative 2 on the inside. Well, I actually have two transformations there. The negative is going to make it reflect, since it's on the inside, it's going to reflect horizontally. And the 2, since it's multiplied, is going to make it either stretch or shrink. On the inside, it's going to make it shrink horizontally. So both of those put together means I'm going to multiply my x values 
by a negative one half. One half because inside is opposite, so the opposite of multiplying by two is dividing by two or multiplying by one half. And the last is subtracting one on the outside. So subtraction makes it shift. Outside is going to shift vertically, so it's going to shift down one unit. So I take all my y values and I subtract so let's see if we can get this done. Okay, let me start here. So in this one, it might actually be easier to write out the actual points. So I'm going to do my point 0, negative 1. Here, my x values, so let me do all of my x values in yellow. My x values are going to multiply by a negative 1 half. So in this case, my x values doesn't change, and then my y values I'll do in blue. So I multiply by 3, and then I subtract 1. So my y value is negative 1 times 3 is negative 3 minus 1 means negative 4. And so this guy here actually is just going to go right here. Okay. Let me do this guy here. So that point was negative 2, 1. My x values, I multiply by negative one half, so that means my x values are going to go to a positive one. My y values, I multiply by a three, and then I subtract one. So one times three is three, subtracting one gives me two. So this one is going to go to one, two. Okay, next, this guy over here is negative four negative 2. My x values get multiplied by negative 2, so that means it becomes positive 2. Okay, and then my y value. Negative 2 times 3 gives me negative 6, minus 1 gives me negative 7. So this one goes to 2, negative 7, a little bit below my chart here. Should have made a bigger chart. We'll put it down there. And that was my blue point, so let me call in blue. And I forgot my purple point at negative 4. There we go. Okay, and the last is my green circle. So that is at 2, 4. My x values get multiplied by negative 1 half, and so that would give me a negative 1. My y value gets multiplied by 3 and then subtracted 1. So 4 times 3 is 12. 12 minus 1 is 11. And so that's negative 1, 11, clear up here off the chart. All right, now if I connect these points, I go from this point all the way down here to this point, and then up there, and then back down there. So we can see that this has shrunk horizontally. We can see that this is reflected over the y-axis. We can see that this is stretched horizontally, and probably not that we can see it, but it actually should be shifted down one unit. And so we have the same zigzag shape, but we see all of these transformations happening to it. And so you can see how these things can get transformed really fast. And so if you need to, write out the specific ordered pairs and just focus on the x values at once and then the y values at once, just like I did here. Okay, I have one more type of example, and this is kind of working it in a backwards format. So, so far we've been giving the function and we've been drawing the graph. Well, now it gives you the graph and it asks you to come up with your own function. And so there's two examples here, and I suggest that if you can come up with the functions for each of these examples individually. Okay, the key to this is to first figure out what basic graph we're going to start off with. So if I look at A and I compare that to all of my functions, I need to figure out which one does this resemble the closest. And we can see that it resembles this one here, and so that would be y equals 1 over x. And so that's my starting point. I know I'm going to have y equals 1 over x. Then I need to figure out what happens to it. Well, y equals 1 over x normally looks like this here. 
So how does this black graph get transformed to this red graph? Well, we can see that this black graph just looks like it got shifted left three units, one, two, three. So how do I put that shifting left three units into my actual function? Well, shifting is addition or subtraction. Left is on the inside of our function. And on the inside is actually happening backwards. So if I think shift left, I think subtract three, but it actually means adding three. So I need to take this function and I need to add three on the inside. Well, the inside means where the X is. So I need to add three to that part. If it was shifted up three, it would look like this. I would add three on the outside. So outside means outside of the fraction, inside means inside of the fraction. And so I now believe that I have the function of this red graph here. If you don't trust yourself, you can always graph it on your graphing calculator. Okay, part B. Again, first things first, we need to figure out what our basic function is. So if we can see anything that resembles that, and that would be this one here, y equals x cubed. So we know x cubed looks like this. So we need to figure out what happened to this. Well, it got shifted up one unit, and then it also got reflected, reflected vertically. And so we need to figure out how that changes. So our basic graph is x cubed. Reflecting vertically is a negative on the outside. And then a shifting up one is also a adding on the outside. So this is now the function for this graph. Again, if you don't trust yourself, graph it on a graphing calculator. And so I think I have covered every single possible combination of these transformations. Shifting, reflecting, stretching, shrinking, inside, outside, normal, backwards, so on and so forth. Hopefully you can use all of this knowledge to put it all together to do an excellent job on this homework.